Now, there are a variety of labs that are available uh, around the world in order to measure and evaluate the integrity of the gut as well as the gut flora. For example, you can test through blood testing or stool test for levels of zonulin. This is something that is very common. It's, it's talked about by multiple uh, uh, schools and, and, uh, and practitioners. Unfortunately, zonulin is, is not the best test for intestinal permeability. There is another option for blood testing for antibodies, which is going to be much more reliable. And one of the most reliable ways to test is also through what's called the urine mantle lactulose. These labs are offered by Doctors Data, Genova Diagnostics, and Cyrex Labs, if you're looking for more information about those labs. And we know that while zonulin test is heavily promoted as the go-to test for intestinal permeability, there are multiple studies that are now showing us that zonulin should not be used as a diagnostic tool for intestinal permeability. And there are multiple reasons, but one of the reasons are because zonulin levels may fluctuate every few hours and therefore a single measurement of zonulin level is not recommended for the assessment of the intestinal, uh, intestinal barrier in integrity. Also to add to that, zonulin in comparison to antibodies is very short-lived and so it's not going to give us a clear picture of how the patient's gut is responding to certain foods that they're eating and what's really happening there because of that fluctuation in levels of zonulin. So one of the tests that we would recommend is the lactulose mannitol uh, urine test in which a patient drinks a solution that has those two compounds and then we measure the levels in their urine six hours later. And the reason why we measure that is because if the patients have a condition of increased intestinal permeability, what will happen is these molecules will slide through their tight junctions into the bloodstream and then, then they will be picked up by the kidney and eliminated in the urine and that allows us to get this report and determine if that's something, if, if the patient has a problem with their integrity of their gut. And so lactulose is a large sugar molecule that is poorly absorbed in, the, in our gut. And under normal physiological conditions, these saccharides are restricted from passing across the tight junctions into the bloodstream. But if the patient has increased levels of lactulose in the urine sample, that indicates that it was leaking through the intestinal tight junction into the bloodstream in a state of increased intestinal permeability or leaky gut. Manitol, the other molecule of sugar, is absorbed through the intestinal cells and serves as a marker for intestinal absorption. So lower than normal levels of manitol might indicate poor absorption of nutrients through our cells. So this test actually gives you two different indications and there's also the lactose manitol ratio. And so it's a powerful tool to help determine if your patient have indeed a problem with intestinal permeability. And then of course, a few tips that could be useful because there are very specific protocols depending on what it is that we find. If there's a certain enzyme that is missing, if it's fats, proteins, or carbs that are not metabolized properly, if there are inflammatory markers in their stool test, if there are different pathogenic bacteria or yeast, so there are different protocols, but essentially one of the biggest tips is to maintain a diet full of polyphenols because some of those polyphenols such as quercetin, resveratrol, asperidin are really important in maintaining the integrity of the gut and they're found in many fruits and vegetables. And I'll give you a few examples for nutritional, focused nutritional medicine. For example, vitamin A, if there's a deficiency of vitamin A, it might alter the bile acid metabolism and the gut flora, resulting in increased bactericide vulgatus. If the patient, uh, for example, does not have a sufficient amount of zinc, it might lead impact the gut barrier and lead to upregulation of chemokines. 
And in practice, we've often seen that an average of 20 to 40% of patients are depleted in zinc, which is really important for maintaining the structure and function of the membrane of, uh, uh, barrier. And then we have vitamin D, which is really important for the integrity of the tight junction. Vitamin D treatment found to increase the levels of claudine 1, claudine T2, and claudines are structural molecules of the tight junctions. And what we're seeing is two problems with vitamin D. One, the, the prevalence of vitamin D is much greater than we, we, we thought to be, and there are studies that are showing that, because we are no longer, even if we take supplements, no longer really exposed to sunshine in the way that we used to. The second problem is that even if your patient is taking vitamin D supplement, Many patients are deficient in magnesium, and magnesium is essential for the activation of vitamin D in our body. And then we have folic acid, choline, vitamin B12, which studies showing that the folic acid, for example, decreased the expression of cytokines and chemokines and might reduce the inflammatory response in a, a, a LP, LPS activated macrophage, lipopolysaccharides activated macrophage. These are again the bacterial, um, let's call them bacterial waste, that might migrate into the bloodstream, triggering and activating the macrophages, eventually leading to the development of inflammatory conditions. And so these are just a few examples of how nutrients could be beneficial in the treatment of gap barrier dysfunction. And there are specific probiotic species, herbs, and nutritional compounds that are found in research to be very effective to address each one of those conditions and, and issues with the patient's gut. Here are a few of the citations. And so it's really, really important. And if the take home from this presentation is that it's really important to, to understand how the gut flora integrity and function and metabolism play a role in different chronic conditions. Even the lack of certain metabolism, metabolism of certain nutrients or the, the chronic migration of bacteria or toxins through the gut into the bloodstream can continuously flare up your patient's conditions. It can contribute to other conditions or complications. And so it's really important to understand that. And there are specific treatment protocols including nutritional supplements that you can use and recommend to help your patients. And as I mentioned, there is, we have a specific, uh, specific classes on the gut-brain axis, which is the two-way biochemical signaling pathway that takes place between the gastrointestinal tract and the central nervous system. And several studies have already established a connection between the gut function integrity and neuroinflammation, cognitive function, autism spectrum disorder, and several mood disorder, such as anxiety and depression. I mentioned psychobiotics, which is basically living microorganisms or probiotics that, that basically confer mental health benefits to the host through interaction with commensal gut bacteria. So when prescribed at the right amount at the right species can lead to cognitive change, or, or impact mood disorders. Now, this slide is a reminder of the important role of the gut microbiome ecosystem in regulating the function of several other systems in the body, such as we mentioned, the gut-brain axis. Of course, we have, we have a whole training about each one of those many topics that we have discussed, but we look into the specific lab analysis, the specific treatment protocols, how to evaluate through the clinical presentation. And so really making sure that you can address your patient's chronic conditions for them to improve their health rather than progress down the disease pathway or develop complications. And so this is all, this entire training was built to allow you to gain new skills and offer comprehensive care to your patients. So your patients would love what you're doing, and we've been getting amazing feedback from patients and providers 
uh, over the last few years have been utilizing this new system and new approach and it's very valuable it will also give you an incredible advantage over everybody else over in your field that is just offering the mainstream approach uh, and, and looking at just the symptoms instead of looking at the root cause. Here's an example of one of our graduates, Dr. Bogner, who wanted to offer comprehensive care to his patients. And he graduated from our program and started offering functional medicine and comprehensive care. And his practice grew so fast that he needed to hire an assistant and send her to train with us as well. So if you're interested in the clinically focused functional medicine program, reach out to us. Our mission is to help 10,000 practices around the world to offer comprehensive care to their clients, and I hope that you and your practice would be one of them. Best of health, and I'll see you in the next class.